All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back. We are here with a game, and I am rubbing my hands together, literally in anticipation, because I have been absolutely just inundated with requests to cast this exact game. It is Ants Esports, several in the top right, up against Showtime in the top left, and this is straight out of the Team Liquid Star League. This game was played just on the weekend, and it was in the middle of the night while I was sleeping. And I wake up, I turn on my Twitch stream, and instantly there is a barrage of messages saying, Pig, what did you think of Serral Showtime? Oh my god, are you going to cast it? Oh my god, how much, how, how cool was it? There were people telling me this was game of the year. So, we're going to find out. This is one of the rare times I haven't even checked if this is a good series or game. I am trusting the fact that so many people in the community have been messaging me about it and telling me I've got to check it out. So, we're going to check it out together and we're going to see, does this live up to the hype? Are people getting a bit hyper, uh, a bit too much of the hyperbole going, you know, the hyperbole? Or is this actually the best game of the year? And what the heck makes it so fantastic? I can't wait to find out. NC Sports Serial is, of course the current reigning world champion, also the 2018 world champion, him and SOS, the only two dual world champions in the entire world. Uh, of course, unless you count Katowice before it was the main event in StarCraft 2, in which case <laughs> Rogue definitely uh, definitely could, uh, could argue that he uh, is a three-time, but uh, nonetheless, Showtime is also on a bit of a roll right now. Uh, Serral won Home Story Cup after taking a break, skipping Valencia. He is back. It feels like he's refreshed. And, I mean, it felt like Home Story Cup was a warm-up tournament. Serral looked stale, uh, off, off meta, not really up to date with his builds. And yet, he just ended up figuring out how to find a way to win every single series in that tournament. Or at least all the ones after the rocky start that he had. Uh, Showtime, though. For those who are wondering, man, Showtime, he doesn't really stand a chance against Serral, does he? Uh, guys, guess what? If you weren't following TSL, you might not realize Showtime actually beat Maru in the upper bracket, knocked him to the loser's bracket. And that is why, I mean, amongst a whole slew of other results is why Showtime is actually looking to be a very big obstacle in Serral's way. Now, this is just one game out of a best of five series. I might cast the whole series later, but for now, let's talk about the strategy and get into it. Now, interestingly, Showtime is going for a Stargate, but notice he's only chrono boosting probes so far and he's not chrono boosting the Adept. So this Overlord is immediately going to see that and Serral's going to say, hey, wait a second. If you're not chrono boosting the adept there's no way you're going to come across the map and be aggressive he maybe runs the adept here fakes the shade out but there's no way he commits to that as a result Ser oh my god what the heck i was going to say serral's going to delay his ling speed but serral isn't just delaying his ling speed he's completely repurposing the 100 minerals 100 gas for that and he's putting it into overlord speed instead so that's going to give him 100 information on any cheeky maneuvers that showtime does He's going to be able to scout really early with speed overlords. And he just says, hey, why would I need Ling Speed? If there's no Adepts attacking me, why would I need it? That being said, there we go. There's, there's the Adept coming out, but that's a fake shade. Yeah. He, oh, no, he does actually shade out. Okay, Showtime's going to take the Watchtower with this Adept. Does he send another Adept out? Now, notice the way he hides the Adept, so you never know with the Overlord. Did he complete the shade or did he cancel it? So definitely keeping Serral in the dark. But otherwise, the Adepts are just coming home for now. So... Very conservative play. The first Overlord comes in. Actually, it's a Phoenix first for Showtime. So he's going to be able to kill this first Overlord and says, hey, that's not free. And uh, the Overlord does spot that there's an Oracle building behind it. So it still looks like a very economic build. Serral also sees that the in-base is getting mined out. Now, this is all signs of Showtime wanting to play a very big macro game, wanting to go later into the game. He says, look, I'll deny your scouting, get a bit of value out of the Phoenix. The Oracle will do light harassment. I'll take this super safe third base, which you can't attack because of this mineral wall. And, I mean, you're never going to break this natural RU as the Zerg player. <laughs> Not without a very committed all-in. Serral's got how many queens up? Four queens. Two more about to pop, so six queens total. Uh, he is back to mining gas, so he could go for a quick lair if he chooses to. And uh, that would be a pretty nice way to take advantage of a guy who... Especially if he sees this double gas here, the quick third base, Twilight Council. So Showtime does not have a lot of gateways. He's going to be incredibly defensive on this map. Probably one of the better ways to play against Serral because especially once you see Overlord speed, you're not going to be surprising him with any early aggression, are you? Phoenix is going to catch its second Overlord and that'll be the second kill this game. But the Overlord's going to do its job. Serral says, yeah, I can throw a few Overlords away as long as they confirm that I'm safe. And seeing all these tech structures, he knows that indeed he is just that. Evo Chambers on the way as well. Going up to four gateways is Showtime. This is Showtime's favored way to play. He's been doing this against like Solar in uh, Home Story Cup, I think it was, and a few other tournaments recently. Probe actually has a really good video 
on a, a build very similar to what Showtime's doing here. Yep, the two sentries as well. Now, he's only got two oracles. He didn't go three oracles because he opened with that early phoenix. But look at that, guys. He just caught the drone moving out to the fourth. And that's a really good tonight. I think that might have actually been the second one. Yeah, he's killed two drones coming out there to take the fourth. So actually, that was meant to be a super quick fourth base. Several sees that Showtime is building a good economy. And he wanted to get ahead there, but loses a few workers there as well. The slow Zerglings unable to get away from these oracles. And the Phoenix up in the top, pushing that Zerg vision back. Now, the lair is almost finished, and he's already up to those four gases. Actually, six gases. You know, this is a point where I think Rogue or Dark, someone like that with real killer instinct, would say, hey, Protoss is playing really defensive. Let's try and sneak out a Spire, go for a big round of Mutalisks. Especially in this case, seeing the Protoss already looking for a fourth base off just a handful of units. I mean, that is disgusting greeted. Oh my god, can you believe it? Several. I mean, I'm always here criticizing Serral for being too predictable, not having that killer instinct necessarily, and wanting to play safe and conservative. Well, nah. He's realizing that in this scenario where the Protoss is sitting back, they're not attacking, they're not forcing you to make ravages and roaches and banelings to defend. You just can build up that gas bank. So he's going to go for the Spire. I'd like to see extra gases on this base now as well, because Mutalisks are so expensive on that. He's going to come through with the Overlord. He sees lots of upgrades coming in. Doesn't spot the Templar Archives. That goes down after the Overlord crosses, but the Lings come in. Ooh, he gets a probe. Can he get a second one? Ah, not quite. Looks like Showtime is going to move out and take the Watchtower here. Maybe look to press forward, but Cyril did not take that middle base. He expanded to the bottom, and I think that makes sense. I think this base is terrible for Zerg, because this ramp is a scary area to engage in a Proto Splash damage. You see, so, you look at this. Showtime doesn't know this. Showtime hasn't had that much vision, so he, I think he thought Cyril probably took this hatchery, but... Now he's just going to come forward, clear up a little bit of the creep spread, and the oracles, of course, protecting the stalkers from any potential Zerglings around. But the Lings might look for a little bit of a wraparound. Uh oh, Showtime messing up, leaves his oracles out in the open. One of those does fall down, and 13 Mutalisks all at once in the production tab. So Serral is really holding down the Mutalisk button, and man, I got to tell you guys, uh, a big Protoss fan, a big Zerg fan, big Serral, and Showtime fan, I'm worried for Showtime. This Oracle, his hopes and dreams rest with this Oracle. If Showtime doesn't see these Mutas coming, and he hasn't seen the Spire, remember, he's screwed. He's just so screwed. 16 Mutas in the production tab. And look at that. Serral's just like, no, you can't come in here. The Mutas are all popping, guys. They're all flying out. The Oracle hasn't seen it. He needs early warning. If these Mutas arrive at his base without him seeing it, Showtime's dead. I mean, what's he got? He's got Psystorm almost finished, a few High Templar, batteries and cannons on the third, but he needs cannons and batteries in the mineral lines. The Mutas are coming forward, a ton of Zerglings and Mutas all coalescing at the front. Oh my god, he's going to just dive in the front! He's going after the Stalker in the wall! He kills it with the Mutalists, allows the Zergling Flood right on into the base! And this is a brutal maneuver, Serral's Lings ransacking the main already. A lot of the probes didn't manage to mineral walk, they are stuck. The Mutas take out a few Stalkers and they do pull away this in-base. There's no cannon, no battery on the in-base. Oh no, Showtime up on four bases. He was just getting into his stride. And in comes Serral with absolutely massive worker kills. Oh, big storms, big storms, can he kill the Mutas? The Mutas eat some big storms, quite a few of them do go down. But they do have very rapid regen. Remember, that is a, an ability of the Mutalisks. And they do pull back at the end of that. Nine Mutas go down, but well worth it. 26 probe kills, dude. Massive. Gets two high Templar, a sentry, eight stalkers, a cannon. Oh, man. That's a very effective start for Serral. He's now got... I mean, he doesn't have a fifth base yet. We could criticize that, but he's going dropper lords. Oh my god, he's getting Zergling drops or Baneling drops ready, I guess. Does he have a Baneling nest or some sort of transition? It looks like for now, Mutas and Lings seem to be the order of the day. Serral's just like, no, I'm just going to do a mass Ling drop in the back. Join that up with the Mutas. Make it really hard for Showtime to defend. Showtime trying to make more high Templar. He doesn't have any cannons in his natural or his main. i got to argue that that maybe is a bit of a mistake, but Cannon Battery Archon in the in-base that's going to help keep him really solid. Watch out for the stasis trap, though. Serral, he doesn't see it. He does pull back for now. Lots of stalkers and archons scaring him off. Here comes that big drop. I think that the archons and the cannons should be able to defend these 40 zerglings with a bit of battery overcharge coming down. So this might actually work out for Serral. Ooh, the mutas dive in. They get one or two of the phoenix. The phoenix, though, do a good bit of damage towards those mutas as well. The ling drop comes in. Instant surround on the cannon. The cannon is not in range of the battery. And he instantly surrounds the overcharge. Wow, this is actually really good control from Serral. He's going to take down those Archons, or at least one or two of them. But more Zealots warping in should be able to protect that. Meanwhile, the Mutas and the Phoenix are dueling in the main base. This is the more important fight. Another Phoenix falls, but so many Mutalisks going down. 
And it looks like the Archons did get cleaned up, but so did all the Zerglings down here. The Phoenix hunting down so many of these Mutalisks. Serral has given up on the Muta play. He's only got these eight left. Most of his Mutalisks have gone down. The 22, he's only got four more probe kills. Killed a few Phoenix, a few Archons and Stalkers, but I gotta say, without a fifth base actually being up, he's only taking it now. He's forced to transition and it doesn't seem like Showtime's dead. Somehow Showtime has weathered the storm. It's a very good map for Protoss, let's be real. Stargazers does have this in base, a very compact fourth base down here. But I don't know, man. If you're surprised by mutas like that, it doesn't feel like a good situation. And yet he's got Storm. He's got Archons, Phoenix up. His bases are covered with cannon battery. He could move out to take a fifth in the near future. He's got plus two attack and he's adding plus three attack and plus two plasma shields. So his Archons are going to be really tanky this game. As, uh, yeah, there's plus two melee. Plus one range is now on the way. A dropper lord is being morphed, so we might see some Baneling drops. Hive's almost finished. Do we see Ultralisk play in this scenario? I think Ultras could work, but it looks like Greatest Spire will be the order of the day. Serral's going to try and play Broodlords. Now, if you think about this, there's no Robotech for Showtime whatsoever. And actually, I think if you don't play Robotech, he's got a Robo, but no actual units out of other than Observers, right? He's got two Observers. If you don't actually build any Immortals, you can end up in a lot of trouble because Ultras can ruin you. So can Lurkers. Interesting that Serral's playing neither of those this game. Lings do get deflected from the front. The Muters are looking to just trade themselves off at this point. He realizes, hey, I've already forced a lot of Phoenixes from you. Picks off a few more probes and Serral, not really caring anymore, says, hey, I want to replace that with better supply. And better supply is on the way. Corruptors being built right now. Corruptors, of course, aiming for Broodlord tech. Baneling drop's going to come in behind as well. Does he have another Baneling drop on the north? Doesn't look like it. He's just got these uh, overlords from the Ling drop left over. Adrenal glands is on the way as well. Looks like Showtime wants to push. He senses Great Aspire could be coming in anytime. Let's check. Oh, look at that. Picks up a few of these Baneling cocoons. Gets a Ravager, actually. Very nicely done. Gets one Ravager. Oh, big storm on the Linglongs as well. Does tickle his own Phoenix, but they're okay. Does Showtime know about the Hive? He has no idea, but I think he just senses. He's like, dude, it's 12 minutes. I gotta get going. We gotta get something done. Clears some creep. Uh-oh, High Templar in the open. Showtime with a big mistake there. His High Templar have been left out in the open. I don't know if that's bait or if that's on purpose, but I can't imagine it's on purpose. Baneling Drop just came in. Oh my god. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, he just killed 19 probes. Are you kidding me? Whoa, that whole mineral line just got blasted. I'm sorry I missed that one, guys. I am going to have to rewind at the end of this game and go back and catch it, but a very effective Baneling Drop. I don't think it matters too much because Showtime holds down the probe key and is like, hey... I'm back to 75. I'll be at 80 in no time. But plus two shields, plus three attack is going to make this a pretty tanky force. Zealot charges on the way as well. Broodlords have been spotted. If he can storm all the Roachling Bane, though, the Stalkers could make quick work of the Broods. The Broods are going to get rid of one of these Archons. Very nice pick off. The Storms push back the Zerg, but they don't actually kill too much. Oh, he tries to blink forward. Maybe a bit over eager there from Showtime. Plasma shield upgrades do help him out a little bit, but he's got to be careful. Saves a few Stalkers with the Prism and does pull back. That top side, very well defended with the spores. Serral realizing things are dangerous. Carapace, plus three melee. And it feels like Serral's building the better quality army as he adds Broodlords, but Infestors aren't out yet. And that's a big deal because Infestors are usually what's going to allow you to start trading a lot better. He's still got Ling Bane down here. So he's going to use Ling Bane to smash into Showtime and see what he can achieve there. The Archon Stalker clearing the Watchtower. The Ling's run in. Stasis Trap is there. Does Showtime have cannons in each base? It looks like, yeah, he does. So I don't think he's too worried about the Ling's getting in. And oh, unless they find an upgrade. Ooh, no battery healing. Maybe if he uses the battery overcharge, he could have saved it. Ah, but Showtime does lose his plus one armor upgrade. Not the most important upgrade, but nonetheless, a, a real pain to lose that. Cannons do take out these Banelings. They don't really find the mark. Meanwhile, Stalker's blinking across the back. Showtime's going ham. He's got an Archon Stalker force in the bottom. He's got Archons running forth in the middle, which the Broodlords do deal with. These Stalkers going after this hatchery. That's a very tricky move. If he can get out of there before those Broodlords kill him, that'd be big. The Transfuser's going down. Serral's trying to hang on to that in base. Can Showtime get out of there? He gets it, but the Stalkers, many of them going down. Four of them are saved. The Phoenix getting shot down at the same time. They're trying to fight the Broodlords, but I think Showtime realizing they are not the most effective supply right now. Looks like Ling Bane just rolled into that base as well. Let's check the battle report. Looks like only one probe went down, and uh, a lot of the cannons do survive, so I think Showtime's okay with these trades for now. Looks like he's up 1,000 resources in the units lost, so, I mean, Showtime is in the lead. Serral has lost 1,000 more resources is, of course, what I mean when I say that. 
Lingbane roaches coming down the south side. The Stalker Zealot, not the most efficient army, but it's annoying. It's hard for Serral to split his units correctly. These guys are going to look for a hatchery snipe. He also could jump on the Broodlords. They don't have a lot of support right now. Stalker's very good units there. Oh, great recall to avoid the links around on the south. It really feels like Showtime is starting to get some good economic damage. Gets that hatchery as well. He's down on supply right now. Serral has better overall supply and a bit more money in the bank. But Showtime has gone to a magnificent economy behind this. He's on 92 probes. He's about to be at 95 probes versus Serral 70. Serral does cancel a Nexus trying to go up in the bottom. But he doesn't really find any economic damage. And Showtime... He's naturally going to be more efficient with Protoss, you would think. But as the Infestor Broodlord count grows, that might swap around. The Roaches come in, eat some big storms. Ling's on the bottom side at the, at the same moment. We've got Serral here. He's rebuilding this hatchery. I love the Wall of Spines on the bottom. And he's probably going to make more Banelings and keep hitting this Nexus. By denying this base in the bottom, Serral makes things very difficult for his opponent. There is a Burrowed Zergling underneath that image of the Nexus. So Probe comes over. Instantly goes, oh gosh, that's so annoying. Observer is coming south. And, uh, oh, I don't know how he killed it. That's weird. <laughs> I guess the, uh, the maybe the Ling unburrowed or something like that. Oh, Banelings all roll into an Archon and do Jack Diddley squat. Meanwhile, it looks like this army's posturing in the north. He's going to try and posture in the south. So Showtime wants to be pushing both sides at once with Archon Stalkers and High Templar Storm. Oh, good Storm on the Zerglings, but Serral wants to take out these Archons. Can he get them? Good micro by Showtime. One Archon goes down, but it doesn't come cheap. Lots of Roaches and Lings falling for that. Meanwhile, Stalkers blink across the gap one more time, but that means this army is caught out. The Broodlords are getting some pretty crazy trades here. Showtime may have a bigger economy right now, and he's definitely trading well versus the Roaches, but I don't think Serral wants Roaches anymore. I think Serral just wants to keep growing his Broodlord count. He's actually building Hydras and Lurker upgrades right now, so realizing that Showtime is staying on ground, Lurkers are the units that just destroy everything. Unlike Broodlords, they are not weak to Stalkers. Stalkers can always, like, dive on and expose Broodlords, snipe a few of those down. They can't pull that off at all against the Lurkers. Overseer flying in the main base, and this is great scouting. Serral's checking. Hey, are you swapping into carriers? Because if you are, I need to play more Corruptors, more Vipers. But he keeps seeing that the Stargates are just still idle. They're not doing anything. There's three Stargates up for Showtime. He's adding double Cybercore air upgrades, preparing for an air swap, but he's not doing it just yet. So Serral realizing, hey, Lurkers are going to ensure that you can't break through. You're clearly trying to swarm over me right now. I'm not going to give you that chance. Showtime's still got that giant 96 worker economy. He blinks forward. He gets a Broodlord. Good transfusers for Serral. Will he lose a second Broodlord? The answer is no. Oh my god. Chain fungals, chain transfusers. And Showtime gets one Broodlord for 12 Stalkers and an Archon. An appallingly bad trade for Showtime. Showtime's trying to push south here a little bit. He's got to be careful. Jumps on top. And oh, if he comes in from both sides, there's not a lot of support here. But here we go. Lings, Lurkers, Banes coming in from the south side. A crazy move for Showtime. He actually dodges the first fungal. Gets over the top. Does cop some follow-up fungals. But he's already taken out one or two Broodlords. The Lurkers burrowing, though, are going to fight him back. And once again, that's another rough fight for Showtime. Look at these resources lost. He killed four Broodlords, apparently, over this last fight. But so many Protoss units went down for that. He's going to have to pull back his Showtime, picking up some Zealots, trying to drop in the north. Remember, there's a lot of Spore Crawlers in the north side. Serral's realized that's a, a very common drop angle, so he just drops the Zealots, pulls back with the Prism. A couple of workers go down. The other ones are going to burrow up. Oh, that's really good. I actually like the idea of Showtime taking the Spores out to clear up the area for future drops. Meanwhile, uh oh that's a very good ground-killing army. You don't want to blink on that, Showtime. Showtime gets rid of one Broodlord. He gets rid of another Broodlord. Oh my god, I can't believe he's actually taking that out. Thought the Lurkers would clear that army way quicker, but the Stalkers, by blinking past them, they actually lured the Lurker shots away from the rest of the Zealot Archon. So the first Stalkers that blinked forward were kind of like sacrificial lambs, and it worked out quite well. He's also, remember, he's got plus three plasma shields, plus three attack. He's adding plus one ground armor. He's finally coming in now after that earlier Forge Snipe, but his Archons are just way tankier than normal Archons. And Showtime, he's now trying to secure that gold base. That's the one base which isn't really given automatically to either player. All the other bases are clearly on one side of the map, but that gold base, dude, that is a beautiful one. Overseer comes in again. Serral's so worried about an air swap, but it's not happening yet. The Spinecrawlers and the Lurker will take out a couple of these Archons, but there's so many more Archons behind that. 
gets that Lurker in the mineral line. The other Lurkers do come down. Overseer flies through the main. It sees a lot of Stargates, but nothing producing out of them. And that is exactly what Showtime's going for. He's just going ham. Our big Zealot wave warped in on the bottom. Zealot, Archon, Stalker looking to overwhelm. Serral realizing, oh my lord, I actually just need more units. I feel like Ultras would have been amazing for him this game. Anything that he could quickly build and just A-move around to deal with these masses of Protoss. Something really tanky like an Ultra would be good, but man... Oh, every time you think Showtime's getting a good fight, the Fungals make him pay for it because he just can't leave. Look at that resource loss tab. Showtime was ahead by a thousand a few minutes ago. The first time we mentioned it, he's now down 5,000. But even though that sounds terrible, he's just denied one of Serral's bases and he's just started mining from the gold. Broodlords are very far out in the open though. This is a bit of a mistake. Oh, okay. He does take out that very well worth two fungals to kill the Observer. Needs to shut down Showtime's vision. If Showtime sees those exposed Broodlords, he'll jump on them. Another Observer up here. Showtime marauding around really... Oh, he just wants to shove basic units. He just wants to drown Serral. Serral's playing like a Protoss player with the technical advanced army comp. Showtime's playing like the Zerg by just throwing low tier units into him. The Prism comes back in the main. Can the Hydra and the Queen stop the warp in? Doesn't look like it. The Zealots will finish warping in. The Corruptor will take care of the warp prism. But at the same time, Zealots are trading pretty well in that mineral line against those Zerglings. Stalkers blinking across the gap one more time on those minerals. Army in the middle does fall back. Broodlord's a bit too scary for the Archon High Templar. They have to be careful. They don't get jumped down. A few Stalkers get left behind. They're going to take down some dropper lords the zealots in the main base are cleaned up and that means guess what no more warp prism there is no warp prism left on this map it did go down the stalk is going to try and pull to that left side but the roach ling will handily clean those up Showtime does lose all but one of those stalkers. More zealots on the bottom. He's going to deny this base one more time. If he can get the Evo Chamber, that would be huge. But Serral cancels the hatchery, gets the refund, burrows his drones, his carapace, though he doesn't want to lose that plus three carapace. Remember that that helps all of his units. High Templar lands a decent storm, but I think he lost a bunch of High Templar there. That's his last High Templar. And the Infestors say, you can't leave. Great fungal on a bunch of these units. Stalkers blink forward and take one for the team. But the Evo Chamber survives in the bottom right. Serral is crushing the engagements. He is winning army versus army, but that's Showtime strategy. It looks on the units lost tab now 7,000 behind his Showtime, but Showtime's got so much more money. And oh, he catches a Broodlord out in the open. Only loses one Stalker for it. More Zealot run by is coming in and they're draining the Infestor energy. The Infestors, don't, they don't have unlimited energy. They are holding these Zealots in place. They clean this up. The fight versus army versus army efficiency is out of control. But Showtime hasn't started mining the gas yet on that gold base. He really needs to mine that out to make sure he uses this advantage. Yes, he's killing a lot of Serral's economy. Serral's down to just 45 drones. Serral's economy is in the dumps. This might end up being the one big army that has to win the game for Serral, whereas Showtime has carriers on the way. He's got so much army. I don't know if Serral's going to be able to afford to swap into Corruptors properly because there's already air units on the way. But oh, look at that. Serral's going to counter swing. Serral's angry. Serral losing his northern pocket base, but he strikes and he will take out the gold. Oh, Showtime. He's going to try and recall, but that's a lot of lurkers. Oh, bad recall. A bunch of stalkers and an Archon instantly goes down and he still ends up losing the base. Meanwhile, Broodlords clean up a few of the Zealots. One of the High Templar does get away on the south side, trying to still fight this area is Showtime. Carriers are here. Plus three air attack, plus two armors on the way. Now, what a scrap we've got. Showtime just throwing away army after army, but he's trading. It's a bit inefficient, but Serral's economy has been battered and bruised. He's got a bunch of minerals in the top base, which has been taking a hiding. This base also, a lot of minerals left that he'd like to be mining but he doesn't really have the hatcheries alive right now. What's the unit count? 10 Broodlords? 9 Lurkers? That's a, an anti-ground army. That is a, a disaster for Stalkers and Archons to walk into. They just can't close with that. But we've got 6 carriers out now. 3 more carriers on the way. So he's going to go to 9 carriers. How much Psy Storm do we have? Only 2 High Templar. I think that's a mistake for Showtime. I definitely want to see Showtime having at least 5 or 6 High Templar when the fight happens. Feedbacks on the Infestors and Vipers will be key, as will Psystorm's blanketing on everything. But he is pretty much maxed out. Fungal once again catching one of these Observers. Serral's done a very good job of spotting those, and that pushes back Showtime's vision. Comes on north. There's too many Lurkers there. Careful, Showtime. Goes forward. Two Zealots get completely deleted from the map. But Showtime's quick enough to pull back. He's rebuilt the gold base in the bottom. Serral would like to poke it, but he doesn't want to get caught out. Notice if we look at Serral's vision. He's got the Watchtower. He will see this new prism crossing over. But he's got to keep his Infestors and Lurkers near each other to cover. He's only got eight Corruptors. He doesn't have much that shoots up. 14 Queens, eight Corruptors. 
It's not the best anti-air army. All those spore crawlers, by the way, got killed earlier. So the Zealot Drop able to come in. Showtime doesn't have a lot of free supply and a Corruptor will come north to clean it. Showtime jumps forth, manages to snipe this hatchery one more time. And I really love the Oracle usage. Using Revelation on this army, sees where those lurkers are. He focuses down a lot of the lurkers, but the Microbial Shroud, that is very scary. Two of the Broodlords get instantly popped just like that. Fungal catches a few of these units. Looks like he should be able to take out at least one of the Oracles. But man, good starts to these trades for Showtime. Big Fungal though. Serral does land some Big Fungals. Big feedbacks answer that. And a lot of Investors get feedback off the map. But so do a lot of the Protoss units get fungled and held in place. We're going to have to look at that last battle report. Looks like that one was a little bit closer, but still favoring Serral. Uh, looks like... Actually, no, that one maybe favored uh, Showtime a little bit because actually he killed 500 more minerals. That's the first fight in a while where Showtime didn't lose it. He's still down 8,000 resources in the units lost though. And round two of denying the gold base for Serral. Serral's gonna come on in on the north and, and realize he's under attack. What's he got? A couple Banelings? Oh no, Serral's entire army is down here. It's all Lurker Broodlord. It's very immobile. Serral is gonna lose this top base. He's trying to make Banelings, which of course aren't gonna deal too effectively with the Zealots unless they're super clumped up. Oh man, this Prism doing some hot pickups as well. The Banelings going to try and surprise, but good spreadies here from Showtime. Just going in a few Zealots at a time. The Bane's going to do what they can, but they're one-off units. They're not the most efficient in the long term. Those Zealots go down, as does that hatchery. Serral's income is knocked down to the Stone Age. He's got another Zealot drop in there. Does Showtime. Lurkers burrowed underneath it, though. That's not one you want to be unloading or warping in anytime soon, Showtime. <laughs> Let's see if he, if he saw the Lurkers burrow. I don't think he did. Okay, he's going to come for... Oh, no, no, no. He definitely didn't. He definitely didn't. And he does start dropping these zealots, trying to be annoying, but the Broodlords deny, and they actually kill the gold base this time. Showtime is out of gas. He's got one, two gas geysers there, a bit of gas on them, a little bit of gas there, and that's just about it. So Showtime is pretty much completely out of gas. Serral is also completely out of gas, unless he can retake this hatchery or this hatchery, but he's down to 28 workers. He's completely broke. Serral's economy is looking very worse for wear. Infestor's coming forward. Storm does kind of zone them out. Oh! Serral steals the Oracle and says, I can see you. Neural's the Oracle, brings it in, lets the Corruptors take it down. Any value is good value right now. Showtime has a massive supply advantage, but that's all in workers, and those workers aren't worth anything anymore. Look at that. You can see all of his bases have an excessive amount of probes on them. And for Showtime, with very little gas left, it's going to be, how can he use minerals? Will he start just doing more and more zealot harassment to try and kill gas units of several? It really feels like the gas armies, when they clash, are going to decide this game. Showtime pulling back with the prism on the north. The Corruptor was not able to chase it down. Broodlords do shoot some broodlings in there. Nexus trying to go down in this gold base, but I feel like this is not something that Showtime has been able to get up just yet. He's going to need to work the creep back push back these uh, spore crawlers as well and he does have that plus 40 building damage on those tempests upgrade coming in prism on the top does clear up the watchtower showtime fighting for a little bit of map control but i mean serral is just focused on this and you can see the jaws of this creep if you look at the minimap closing in around this gold base it really does look almost like a nidus where i'm trying to eat up the gold base on the minimap that's actually insane <laughs> Zealots go down to the Lurkers on the north. The Prism is getting chased by a Corruptor. As long as Showtime pulls that back to the Cannon Battery, he'll be okay. Tempest here. Oh, one-shotting the Corruptor is very nice. And ah, oh, look at that. Serral's Corruptor chases the Prism. The Prism there does lure it to its death. Oh, big fungal on the carriers and Neural Parasite. Oh, but big storms to answer. Can they actually take them out? Though the storms take out a couple of these Infestors. But nonetheless, the Neural is absolutely insane. He steals one, two, three of these carriers. They all get focused down by the Corruptors. The gold base goes down one more time. And what again is that one more Neural on another carrier? But that does get focused down. Now, for those who don't know, that fight there, you can see Showtime still killed four Infestors, four Broodlords, five Corruptors. He only lost two carriers. He lost a lot of Interceptors and a High Templar, but that was a good trade for Showtime. Even with those Neuroparasites coming down, the carriers didn't do that much friendly fire. And these Tempests are just out of control. They're one-shotting Queens, Corruptors, Vipers, and Infestors. The Prism in the North, we were talking about finding a way to utilize the Mineral Bank. Showtime may have broken through. He's still got that absolutely silly work account behind this, but hey, Banelings actually deal with this round of Zealots. On the bottom side, the Revelation's still working. Showtime has to get rid of that creep spread. That's giving way too much of a vision advantage to Serral. Mothership is on the way right now for Showtime. He's got more High Templar coming in. If he secures this gold base, that's 4,000 gas. 
almost four and a half thousand and maybe four fa four thousand minerals as well if he gets to mine the gold base i don't care how inefficient he was earlier in this game that's going to make up for it and then some several doesn't even have the workers to mine out these two bases that he has in the top so he's really stretched thin 26 workers I mean, it feels like Cyril should be rebuilding drones, but he feels like he just can't defend these bases, so why would he? Only four broodlords left as well. He's got a lot of lurk. Oh, actually, he's only got five lurkers and four broodlords, so I guess it makes sense because it's almost pure air. But if Showtime does swap back into ground, he'll have trouble. Prism comes in, Corruptor Viper takes it out. The creep is now getting removed in this gold base. Every bit of mining that comes in on this gold base is massive. Showtime with 48 workers on just six mineral patches. He's got to put guys on the gas immediately as well. So important for him to put guys. He's only got two on that left gas, unfortunately. And Serral, it feels like he's, he's almost accepting defeat at this point. I mean, what's he doing? He's just saying, I can take the most efficient fights of all time. My name is Serral. But Showtime just has too much money coming in. It's, it's three times the minerals uh, equivalent gas income. I guess we could argue that because Showtime had so many probes, he's probably mined out a bit earlier. So if Serral drags it out, he could say, hey, I've got a few thousand more resources in these base. Whereas your equivalent bases are completely mined out. So that's the argument. But if the gold base is up for Showtime, I don't think it matters. I think it's just terrible for Serral if that gold base is up. He, he needs to deny this 100%. Now he's going to come forward and start building batteries on the high ground in the middle. The Queen's very tanky. Very good at surviving, but it takes so much micro to spam transfusers out in the middle of a battle. And with so much damage output, you just might not be able to cast it before the actual units end up going down. Lurkers coming forwards once again, denying this gold base. Very important denies coming in. High Templar wandering forward. Uh-oh, they just got aggroed into that. Bad High Templar. Oh, bad choice. They do go down. I say choice. Choice for the High Templar. Obviously, Showtime didn't command those units forward. That was just the units getting aggroed in. But Void Rays do come forward. So he's added a few Void Rays in the mix. Very good for fighting Corruptors, but very vulnerable to Queens. Uh, fungal Growth, Parasitic Bomb. And with three infestors, uh, four infestors, three vipers out. Serral's definitely ready for all of those things. Serral's trying to add corruptors right now. He's only got two, two air upgrades and plus two range. Whereas you can see Showtime has every single upgrade except plus three ground armor, which is super unimportant. High Templar actually goes down there. Nice little catch for Serral. Oh, he actually caught three High Templar there for eight lings, a roach, and an overseer. He also, of course, cleaned up these batteries on this high ground. Dude, this really feels like like Serral has is, is just found so many good trades that somehow he is 10,000 resources ahead, but Showtime gets lured to the north again. Serral's going to take advantage of that. He's just going to say, hey, hello, buddy. And this lurk is going to be a massive pain. Actually, there's an observer over to the right side. So there is an observer out there. He's going to try and storm it. That won't work. The High Templar does fall, but unsieges that observer, brings it over, and along with these zealots, should be able to clean this up. Showtime's posturing in the top side. But here come some lurkers. That's enough lurkers, lings, and roaches to easily clear up these zealots. The carrier void ray will snipe this base in the top, trying to deny a bit of Serral's mineral mining. But these lurkers are going to definitely shut this down. Showtime could do with losing another 10, 20 workers, trying to replace those with army. But he's also very low on money. He's going to recall to the bottom side. Get out of there, Serral. Uh oh, Serral in big trouble. Overseer, one, two, and I think two lurkers went down there. Yeah, three lurkers and an overseer, but okay. Nonetheless, doing damage, slowing down the mining of Showtime. Showtime's still 10,000 resources behind, but he's mining the gold base, and I keep talking about it, because look, his army supply, which was behind pretty much the entire game, has now closed the gap. He's only 14 army supply behind, and he's got the mothership out as well, which complicates things for Serral. Serral right now sees a big target on the back of that mothership. He wants to snipe it down. Ling Lurker in the top trying to be annoying. Revelation, of course, very important ability to see where the Zerg army is. And that's what allows the Tempest to use this epic range. 14 anti-air, 10 anti-ground range. The Tempest is the longest ranged unit in StarCraft 2. At least it's anti-air ranges. Oh, we've got some more probes getting thrown away. Good, good call by Showtime there. And I think this base in the bottom, once again, is very exposed. I think Showtime should maybe camp this base. I'm not quite sure. He's trying to get some movement going, seeing if he can find some mistakes. But Serral's going to capitalize and punish that base. As these six lurkers and a couple of zerglings come on in. Oh, the Corruptor Viper. He's looking. He's looking for him. He's looking if he can catch him on the rotate. Nice abduct on the Oracle. Serral grabs an Oracle. If you could get a few Tempests as well, that would be huge. The Nexus goes down on the gold base. And he's only down to six probes, which means Showtime has pretty much given up on mining the rest of this gold base. The 1,200 minerals and the 3,000 gas just going to be left there. 
Another Oracle is being rebuilt, but that's the very last bit of Showtime's gas. If he loses that last Oracle, he's not going to be able to use Revelation. He'll just have to rely on Observers to spot up ahead. He's also, of course, only got 1,122 minerals left for the Interceptors. Each one of those Interceptors costs, I believe it's 15... Yeah, 15 minerals. So a full complement, uh, 8 times 15, 120 minerals per carrier. And you can see he's building a Nexus right now. But that means he's only got enough money to refill about 5 of his 6 Interceptors. So if he fights a few times and those in Interceptors are going down to like Fungal and Parasitic Bomb, he may struggle unless he gets up a few more minerals. Serral, on the other hand, what's his income like? He's actually got some decent minerals because this hatcheries, I told you he has thousands more resources he hasn't been able to mine because his work account's just been getting hammered all game. And sitting on just 21 drones, he's very slowly and patiently mining them out. He comes in and cancels the Nexus again. It's another 100 minerals down the drain. The Lings are going to start clearing those shield batteries as well. Showtime's got to be careful. Archon High Templar Carrier coming forward. There's so many Queens, Lurkers, Spellcasters all there. Seven Zealots. Oh, seven Zealots warp in on the bottom. He's actually going to use those to try and defend the gold base against the Zergans. That's a pretty important fight. Whoever wins that gets the mobility advantage. Big Fungal's landing. Serral's going for it. He chains the Fungal's. Notice he's staying out of the interception range of the feedbacks. And those Queens coming forward in the Microbial Shroud. The Mothership comes forward, but the Archons landing some big splashies all over those Corruptors. And the Interceptors are going to pull back. It looks like the Zealots did lose the fight in the bottom of the map. The Zerglings ended up winning. Oh, wait, no. The Zealots never went out and fought them, I guess. The last two probes are going to rally in and get killed by those Zerglings. Meanwhile, the army in the north is still there. Big problem, guys. Big problem. He spent his last minerals on these Zealots. Showtime is out of minerals. He's out of minerals. He spent it on these Zealots. And now, how many Interceptors does he have? 40? And he's out of minerals. So he can't rebuild a single Interceptor in this game. This is a disaster for Showtime, who's down 14 army supply. I still think his army just has a massive punch to it, though, because... You've only got 18 Corruptors. It's mostly Queens. Queens are not very good units at this point in the game, but Microbial Shroud makes them bloody tanky. Good fungal growth. The Infestors and Corruptors start to take some big hits. The Archons landing massive hits on the Corruptors. Absolutely incredible. If you can land another Storm on the Corruptors, they will get hammered. The Corruptors push back. Oh my lord, the Corruptors are taking massive losses to the Void Rays, the Carriers, the Archons, and the Storm. The Tempest doing very well, but the Broodlords are starting to clear up the High Templar. The Ling Lurker comes in. The last High Templar is going to go down. He gets off a pretty good Storm on the Zerglings, but he also clips his own Tempests. The Tempests are getting chased back right now, and these Carriers, they're completely empty. There is not a single Interceptor left on the field. Okay, Ling's Lurker's on the bottom side. It feels like Showtime. He's still got firepower in here of three Void Rays, six Tempests. That's not that much. But Serral, what's he got that shoots up? Is it just Queens? Is it just Queens? No way. He's got four Corruptors and 14 Queens. The Queens cannot really get on top of the Tempest at all. The Tempest can pick them apart from miles away. There are still three Infestors, though. No Vipers left whatsoever. Both players are almost completely broke. Serral did lose this hatchery. He's long distance mining two hatcheries with 19 workers, building one Corruptor at a time. But he just can't deal with the Tempests. The Tempests can just pick away at him. The mothership is... Oh, she's sticking out. Mama's sitting up front tanking. But she's going to take a lot of damage. The Tempests are going to try and take out these Corruptors. He's got to get rid of these Corruptors. The Void Rays come forward. Massive Fungal. The Infestors recharge. One Fungal lands. Another Fungal lands. The mothership goes down. The Tempests are taking out the last Corruptors. But so many of them are going down. Five Tempests and two Void Rays remain. You can't afford to lose any more of them. Serral's trying to focus them down. But he misfires there and he isn't quite able to finish the Tempests. What does Serral have left? He's got nothing. He's got nothing. He's got one Corruptor and a few Queens. The Queens cannot stand up to the Tempest Void Ray. Do you see the Tempest can just one-shot the Queens, pull back, one-shot the Queens, pull back. The red hit point Tempest there looking very exposed. Serral wants to take it down, but Tempest Micro, very good from Showtime. Trying to pull back those weak ones. Another Corruptor has been built. Another one is building. He's building them one at a time. So it's one Corruptor every 30 seconds or so with this amount of income coming out of Serral. Ling run by in the south is going to try and take out the bases of Showtime. Make sure he doesn't have any mining, which he does not. Both players are completely broke. This is it. And Serral's last Queen's getting trapped. He manages to kill one Tempest. But that's a Pyrrhic victory. He kills the Tempest. He loses almost all of his units. Can he get another? One more Tempest is about to go down. But no, Showtime focuses the Corruptor, pulls back the weak one. And I think Serral's just going to have to accept defeat. His last three Queens running to the south. He fought very hard here against this just flooding, overwhelming style of Showtime. But now Showtime is sitting above the mining. Serral's base trade, I and mean, that's not going to work. There's too many cannons, batteries, and just bases to kill. And Showtime can recall at any moment. There's nothing that shoots up. He's got three queens, two infestors, one corruptor building right now. 
and he might get enough minerals if he can unburrow. Okay, so that's the one thing is he's, he's burrowed. So he can unburrow and then maybe mine enough for one more corruptor. But two corruptors aren't going to do much. Avoid rate is heading back just to try and clean up these lurkers and lings, make sure he doesn't lose the base trade. He's actually sending both void rays back. That's interesting. Showtime maybe a little bit more worried about the base trade than he should be. The void ray does go back and cleans up a few zerglings, but notice the lurkers. Ooh, they don't want to be unburrowed near those uh, those anymore. Overseer will go down as well. Meanwhile, the tempests are going down. What's Cyril doing? I mean, does he unburrow and go back to mining, I guess? He's got the two infestors are gathering energy. Can he maybe make some magic happen with Neural Parasite? I mean, the problem for him is the Tempests and the Oracle can just kill the Infestor and break the Neural. That's the big problem he's running into. But you know what? These Void Rays would really help out. If he had these Void Rays here, that would definitely help. But notice Cyril's hiding. He's hiding. He's waiting. The Oracle, though, sees this army. Ooh, Revelation, but he doesn't catch the Infestors. Cyril's bringing the Infestors in out of the bushes. He's gathering up Transfusers. Keep going down all over that Corruptor. The Corruptor goes down. Neural Parasite is here. He steals two of the Tempests. Neural Parasite and two of the Tempests, but the Revelation goes down. Oh, Showtime's going to take out the Infestor, but the Infestor keeps getting Transfused. It keeps on getting transfused. The Oracle and the Tempest trying so hard. It finally falls. But where the heck are Showtime's Tempests? Serral already killed two of his Tempests using your Parasite. Oh, the Oracle runs out of energy. The Oracle was about to kill the Infestor. The Infestor survives on three hit points. It was one shot from death. The Oracle runs back in and derps out. The Tempests trying to finish off the Infestor. But then the Revelation expires and there's no detection left anywhere on the map. You are kidding me. Showtime cannot see that Infestor. The Queens burrow into the ground. The last units that shoot up for Serral. He cannot find them. The Broodlords run away. Meanwhile, the Void Ray... The Void Rays are going to stop the base trade. But that means they're not with the Tempests. And, uh, <laughs> and serral has got a lot of buildings. He's also long-distance mining. He's got a gas up as well, so he can long-distance mine that as well. He's unburrowed the drones. The Void Rays here cannot see this. There's no detection. That Oracle not only didn't kill the Infestor, but dying right afterwards means he can't go home to clean up the Lings. The Void Rays aren't uh, really dealing with the Lurkers either. He uses Prismatic Alignment. The Void Ray will go after the Templar Archives, but Serral, look at that. His Queen's unburrow. The Carrier sees it. Remember, the Carriers are dead weights. They've got no Interceptors. Showtime warping in those seven Zealots. I mean, he's got to be kicking himself for that. Imagine if he was able to rebuild interceptors during the battle that would have been absolutely massive now the tempest is doing pretty well here he's splitting up his tempest to try and look for mine he's gonna bring the void rays back down to hunt this down he's gonna go for these queens it's serral oh my god his queens okay they burrow just before they go down but serral in such a dangerous scenario he's got one neural what can he do with it the void rays are worried about the base trade showtime's going back to that side serral he could use neural parasite if he can kill the reddit point tempest I don't know how he's going to kill both of them with just one Infestor and three Queens, though. Meanwhile, the Lurkers are doing damage. I can't believe it. He's going to clear the last cannons out. He's clearing the last building. He keeps hiding. He just burrows. The Void Rays can't do anything. Serral's coming in. He's going to use the Neural. He takes the Neural on the Healthy Tempest and he focus fires. And he's got too much vision from the buildings. He spots the other Tempest. He two shots it with the friendly fire. The Queens turn on the final Tempest. He's going to take that Tempest down. The Tempest is going to go down to the Queens. The Transfuse mean they don't die. That one Infestor survivor gets rid of the Tempest. He knows the two Void Rays can't do anything. Showtime has no vision left. And what the hell? Serral just refuses to die. He was down at like 20 workers for about the last 13 minutes of that game. And he just says, efficiency will do it. Efficiency will do it. Efficiency will do it. Almost 17,000 resources. More efficient than the Protoss at the end of that. That's legendary. GG, you absolute monster. Apparently during the live cast of this, at the end of this game, people have told me you can hear Showtime very subtly dropping the, the F word in a moment of disbelief as both players were mic'd up as uh, just as he ggs or afterwards let's see if we can catch it showtime is running out of units he's running out of options and i think serral has actually done it <laughs> gg gets called what a display i talked about magic that was more than magic that was divinity <laughs> yona knows it too he loves it <laughs> What an absolutely silly game there. Over. <laughs> Yona knows. Magic. That was divinity. <laughs> Yona knows it too. He so yeah, yeah. He, he says, what the F, dude? And you can see Serral like, because he's saying it to him. He's like, what the F, dude? Like, what the hell? How did you win that game? And Serral kind of looks at him and just starts giggling. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I probably, probably shouldn't have been able to win that. Oh my God. That's some Chad maneuvers, man. That's such a sick series. Well played by Serral and Showtime, both of them. Great game.
But dude, Sarah with the neural parasite coming in, coming back at the end, absolutely disgusting. Well played.